Good morning, everyone. Let's get on our feet. We've got some songs to sing.
how many holes we dig, how dumb we look, it'll still recklessly pursue us. God's love isn't reckless in how people think it is. 
gets re- reckless in the way that he would stop at nothing. There's nothing he wouldn't move to get to us. There's no wall he won't tear down. There's no mountain he won't move. So I feel like we need to sing this bridge together. There's no shadow. Sing it over yourself. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. Come on, listen to the words. This is for you. There's no wall you won't kick down. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, die you won't tear down, coming after me. He would stop at nothing. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall, there's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow, there's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Shadow, you won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. Coming after me. Oh, no, 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 no. There's no one you won't kick down. Lie, you won't tear down. Coming after me. There's no shadow. There's no shadow. No one you won't kick down, lie you won't say down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, breathless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights to life, leaves the night and I couldn't. Lift your voice. Overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. And oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the night behind. And I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself. Never. Yeah. 
I've tasted.
I've tasted. Thank you. 
week this week there's been triumphs and there's been heartache and um, it's in equal measures at our house so in uh, all things it's Jesus in all things it's Jesus who has the triumph in all things it is Jesus who came out of the grave to save us from a broken world and in all things it is Jesus it is Jesus and miracles start pouring out 
We've seen them and we will see them again. So lift his name. Lift his name this morning, church. Come on, lift your voice.
church family God does love us but he leaves us an example that we should love others so just take a moment to say hello to someone give them a brotherly hug say good day uh, before the service continues thank you Good morning, church family. Welcome today. If you are visiting with us, you are our guest. Please feel very welcome today. If you're watching from home, uh, we welcome you also to this beautiful service. We just want to thank the worship team for that beautiful worship that they led us in this morning. Thank you so much. And um, we thank our special guest family member as well, Reuben, for sharing on violin today, which was absolutely beautiful. So thank you, Reuben. Very blessed by that. Just a few announcements this morning. All family groups, which were our friendship groups, are on Tuesday night here at the church at 7.30.
Wednesday night here at the church, Wednesday, um, Wednesday night also 7.30. The um, young adults group will be on this week 7.30. Just stay tuned to where the venue for that will be, but young adults will be on this week. And also um, just double check with Emily about the young mums group that also meets fortnightly. Thursday morning is prayer morning and we absolutely love it here at church at 7 a.m. One of those songs there just said that we open our mouth and miracles happen. When we come together in prayer, the same is true with that. We open our mouth, we offer things to God and he breaks through. So please, if you can be here at 7.30, sorry, did I say 7.30? 7 a.m. on Thursday morning to be part of prayer. Do so, otherwise a Zoom link gets sent out if you want to be part of that. Otherwise, please see Ray and Vicky for the prayer team. Um, I know so many people have been blessed by that prayer team those who have been visited plus those who've been part of the team that have gone out to pray the blessing both goes both ways um, just a few extra announcements this week um, the church is in need of a new computer I'm just going to read very briefly a notice here about that our church computer is in need of replacement we can no longer upgrade and it is too old for replacement parts so we're trying to raise funds for a new state-of-the-art uh, computer that will run things here in the church if you are able in any way to help with that, please see Vicky um, so that over time we might be able to get funds together so that we can um, update the computer. That would be really wonderful. I mentioned last week about the journey um, of the heart. Um, registrations conference that goes over um, a number of sessions. So please, the details are in that. If you're interested in going to um, a seminar where journey of the heart, you're looking at your heart, you're looking at the love of God just one other new announcement this morning and there is a pamphlet on the bench just near where the jar of all those little chocolates are now before I announce this new one there those chockies guessing how many easter eggs are in that jar now please if you can just a gold coin donation guess how many eggs are in there the money will go to God's Christmas gifts and um, whoever wins will be blessed by all those beautiful chocolates that I'm sure they'll share with the church family wouldn't that be wonderful anyway apart from that so please find your coins, put them in. There is um, a drama coming up called The John Drama and it's going to be out at the um, Fed Uni. There is a pamphlet, a colourful one, just near that jar um, of eggs talking about that. So it's a play with a focus on Jesus. It's coming up in April. Details are out there. So please have a look if you'd like to go and share in part of a play. I think it's to do with Easter. I haven't read all the details. But um, getting together with other church members um, from around Ballarat to share in that beautiful story. Um, Kids Church is on today. I'm not sure whether they've gone out yet or not, but if you haven't yet, Kids Church is on and we thank Jemima and Amy for taking our kids out today. Yep, so kids, time for you guys to go out and be blessed together with that beautiful ministry that those two wonderful ladies have put together for you. Um, as we mentioned last week, Pastor Andrew is on holidays for um, the next three Sundays apart from today. And our guest ministry today is our beautiful Ray. So we will welcome him later um, up to share something that God has put on his heart. So I hand over now, please, to Steve to come and share communion. If you haven't got your little communion cups ready, you've got time to go and get them. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Ross. Peeled mine open already. <laughs> So while you struggle with yours, just um, bringing to mind the, um, it's like crickets, a little chirping everywhere. Just uh, bringing to mind the, the fact that uh, uh, apart from what the, the symbols actually mean, the body and blood of, of Christ given for us, broken, that we can be mended, poured out, so that we could have a relationship with God that just wasn't possible beforehand. Not in this way. We just um, hold those elements reverently in your hand. And um, the fact that we all come together as one family to share this one special meal each week, I think is, is something really special to me. And I hope it is to you too. So, Father, we just thank you for all that you've done. You are our Saviour and Redeemer. You came and took the weight, the, the payment of all our sin on, your, on yourself. 
just thank you for Jesus. So we take the elements now in Jesus' name. Amen. And I'll hand you back to Rose. bring my hand back up there's going to be a prompt in a moment we now come to a time of offering and we um we come to a time of offering every week and we don't shy away from it we actually highlight it because it's a beautiful thing to be able to give to god and this morning i want us just to focus on the word legacy as i think about um, offering this morning now a legacy is when you leave something behind for someone else to benefit from that's not the only definition but it's a part of a definition of legacy I just want to share with that in mind today as we think about offering. Now, this land that we have our church on is a legacy from the Hocking family who used to be in this church years ago when the church used to be up the road and the church actually was the little kids' church room just to the side. That was the church. They gifted this land and then that little church, um, which is now their little um, star's room, was transported down here and then this church was built. So they gave left a legacy so that others could be blessed and so that we could be blessed by hearing the word of God. When my grandma, who died at the age of 98, when she got married, her father-in-law, her new father-in-law when she got married, gave her this gold locket to welcome her to the family. And because I took on my grandma's name as my middle name, when she passed, I got her locket. So it's a legacy, something that's passed on to bless me. Last year, Tom and I were blessed to go to Jess and Nico's wedding over in Uganda. And Nico's mum gifted me this beautiful bag. And the reason it's a legacy is because she passed away this week. And they actually buried her yesterday. And I was looking at the bag and I thought, what a beautiful thing that she passed on to me. I'm blessed to have that beautiful bag from Africa. And it reminds me of her. But she was very generous because they weren't a wealthy family. So that would have been a big deal for her to give that to me. And that's a real blessing. Giving so that others can be blessed. I love the quote that says, He is no fool who gives that which he cannot keep to gain that which he cannot lose. And if you think about that in terms of Christianity, we give our money so the church can continue, so people can hear about Jesus. It's something that we give You know, because we can lose our money. But once you sow into the church family and a word goes out and people hear about Jesus, that's something that can't be lost. And I just want to share a verse with us. And it comes from, it comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. And it says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. So when we generously sow into this house, We're actually leaving a legacy for future generations to hear about Jesus. And I reckon that's worth putting our money in. So um, as the um, the ushers come forward and ush, we know that most people give online. Thank you very much for that. So you can give online, you can do direct debit. um, But we also give the opportunity if you would like to put cash in the bags that come around now. And all that money goes here so that others can hear about Jesus. And that's a wonderful legacy. So thank you for those who give. Thank you for those online who give from home as well. And um, I just want to pray for the blessing on this offering. Father God, we thank you that people do so generously into this house. And because of that, we can have outreaches that are generous. We pray that people would be blessed to hear your name because of the money that is given. And we ask that you'd multiply it and do a miracle with it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We welcome Ray. Can we put our hands together for Ray as he comes forward? on are we live yes yay hello everyone welcome (laughs) ah let's pray just lord just thank you thank you for being here with us we thank you for the love that you give us lord and we 
Thank you that time and time again you were there to pick us up and help us out and move us on. That you're always with us, whether we're on top of the mountain or whether we're in the valley. So we thank you, Lord, that you bless us every day with your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Ah, a lovely warm day. I'll try not to keep this too long because it's going to be a hot day. <laughs> Another hot day, I should say. Mm. Summer's almost gone. <laughs> it's still hanging on, isn't it? Mm. We finally got summer after summer left. How's that? <laughs> well, back to the future. Yes, it's a good movie. But we need to get back to the future in a lot of ways. I've seen so many people struggling with their Christian walk because they're still living in their past. Still bringing their past to the present. And it's a hard job to transition from our past into God's kingdom. It's easy to come and think, ask God to come into your life, to come to the baptism, all those things. They're easy compared to changing our minds and to stop looking back and actually live in his presence. Now God's created a walk for us. He's created a way for us. But we have to position ourselves to walk in that walk, to be ready to take up that walk. But when we're living in our past, looking behind us, we can't see what's ahead of us. This world has taught us that we are the sum of our past, that we are what we lived through. That has made us who we are now. But when you become a Christian, that is no longer true because you are a new creation. Everything has been left in the past and it should be left in the past because that is no longer who you are in Christ. You are a new creation. We need to be in God's presence to walk forward and we need to place ourselves in his presence. Are you still living in the past? Are you still thinking about what's behind you? Are you still bringing your past into the present? All the wrongs that we've done, all the trauma that's been caused to us, all the wrongs that others have done to us, it's all there in the past. But we can't hold on to that. To be in God's presence, we need to let go of all of that. All of that trauma stops us seeing what's ahead of us, stops us seeing God's blessing. It stops us seeing what he has created for us if we're still looking in our past. If you look behind you and walking, you're eventually going to run into something and fall over something because you can't actually see it coming. But if we position ourselves in God and letting God lead us, we can see what's in front of us and we're more prepared to handle it. In Matthew eleven twenty-eight to 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. But if we're dragging our past with us, then that yoke becomes heavy and that burden is still hard and we find it difficult to walk in God's presence doing what God wants us to do because we've laden ourselves with our past still. We need to get back to the future and become and live as a new creation in God, in Jesus Christ. Now, Back to the Future was a great 80s flick. Now, where Marty McFly, Michael J. Fox, travels back in time in a time machine that Doc Emmett built out of a DeLorean. So he travels back to 1955 and interacts with, uh, with his past, which changes his future. Interactions with his mother and his father cause all sorts of mayhem and jeopardise his future existence. Marty and Doc must find a way to fix these mistakes and get Marty back to the future as he does not belong in the past. It's the same as us. We don't belong in our past. We must find a way to get into the future. Now, God doesn't live in our past. God can't fix your past for you. 
There is nothing you can do, nothing God can do to fix all that trauma and all that pain you went through. He can't go back and change your past. And I'm sorry to say the flux capacitor hasn't been invented and we can't time travel. You, know, you go 88 miles per hour in your car, well, you're going to get a ticket. And if it's in town, probably a court appearance to go with it. There is no way to go back and fix the wrongs in our past. But God has made a better way for us. You know, when I was younger, I used to pray to God to change my past because I was ashamed of my past, the way I lived. Even when I became a Christian, I was still ashamed of what I'd done. And it was hard for me to see what God had for me because I was forever living in my past. And I know, to, I know like, you know, once I learned they were fruitless prayers, prayers like fruitless cross buns, who would ever make fruitless hot cross buns? Yucky thing. <laughs> but they were fruitless prayers because I know now God, God can't change your past. There was no way to go back and change all that trauma that's been done to you. But when you come to him, he gives us a new way to walk. He has laid out a foundation for us to follow. Every step he has laid out for us, tailor-made to you for your specific walk. But unless we are standing in his presence, we can't engage into that walk. Like I said, you start walking backwards, eventually you're going to stumble. So you can't see what he has created for you, but you also can't see the stumbling blocks that have been placed in life for you as well. You know, you, come, or you start getting difficulties in your job or difficulties in life through friends or through family and it's hard to, uh, hard to know what to do to get through those times. It's hard to find the tools to go through those times because we're still in the past. And when we don't see it coming, you can't prepare yourself for what is coming. When you're standing in his word, listening to his word, engaging in his word, creating a passionate... Uh, a passionate... Uh, um, walk with God, then he can filter all, he's filtering through us all the time, our world around us as we're walking through it. He's engaging with it all the time. So we must prepare ourselves and stand in a place that he can get us through, that he can show us what's coming and prepare us for what we're about to walk into. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. You do not belong in your past. Just like Michael J. Fox had to find a way to get back to the future because while he was in his past, he was causing more and more destruction to his future and jeopardising his future while he was in the past. And it's like us, while we're living in the past, we are jeopardising our future of what we have now. So we take all that pain and all that that comes with us affects everything we do. It affects every situation we come into. It affects everyone we speak to. It affects the whole world around us. So our past can jeopardise everything that God is creating for us now. Now I've got a lot of friends who are Christians who are finding the walk so hard and they're talking to me all day, every day. They see just so many troubles in their life and they can't see ways around it. But when you start getting and talking to them, you understand it's all that back there that stops them working here and they can't. Look, God says he never gives us more than we can handle. But handle now, when we're trying to walk and carry all that with us, then we've got all so much more trouble to get through to overcome the obstacles in front of us. It's like climbing a mountain with a 40 kilo pack on his back. I've done that before. That's no fun. And it's a hard work to walk to get to the top. And when you get to the top, you know, you're totally exhausted. But if you walked up there without a pack, I could have ran, just about ran up there when I was younger. Not now, of course. I'd need a helicopter to go to now. now. Oh. But we've got to look forward and prepare ourselves for what's coming. Leave your past. Stop looking back. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus 
for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. He has prepared every step for us to walk. Like I said, it's tailor-made for each one of us. And he wants to walk with us. He wants to be with us through everything. He wants to be a part of our life through everything we say, everything we do. And he so much wants us to leave that past behind us. And Isaiah 43, 18 says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. God is not in the past. He does not live in the past. He is here. He is now. He is present. You've got to come into the present. So are you wrestling with God? Are you wrestling with the things in your past trying to come into the present? Are you bringing those things with you? Are you wrestling with God? Well, Jacob wrestled with God. Genesis 32. So, 24 to 29. So Jacob was left all alone. And there a man wrestled with him until daybreak. I tell you, I've done karate. And I've done eight rounds or three minute rounds. And I was exhausted. I don't know how you could ever wrestle it. It's impossible. But we know that he was already blessed from God. So he's blessed with the strength of God at this time. Because, yeah, that's a feat, I can tell you. I think I nearly peed myself I was that exhausted. It was very humiliating. It was very humiliating, trust me. <laughs> when you're totally exhausted, you lose control of your body. And that's what I felt after eight rounds. I could barely control myself. I had to rush to the toilet. Oh, that was terrible. So I know sheer exhaustion is not a... And this guy had been fighting all night, so you imagine what that was like. When the man saw that he could not overcome Jacob, he struck the socket of Jacob's hip and dislocated it as they wrestled. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? the man asked. Jacob, he replied. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with man, and you have prevailed. And Jacob requested, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed Jacob there. He didn't need to know his name, he knew who he was. He was wrestling God. So Jacob's life was a never-ending struggle. His family were very hostile towards him. And you could say he had a dose of karma. Because Jacob was a con artist who had been conned. A liar who had been lied to. A manipulator who had been manipulated. In many ways, he lived up to his name, which means heel catcher. Jacob was promised by God that through him would come great nations. Through him, the whole world would be blessed. But still, Jacob was a man full of fear and anxiousness. His brother Ezu had vowed to kill him. His uncle Laban had cheated him for years. His two wives and had an antistic, an ag- agonistic... I can't even spell it. Let's try that again antagonistic relationship with each other. Well, there's your problem there, two wives. How could you? Spill me. But anyway. <laughs> At that one moment, all his past fears were confronted when he encountered God. He was all by himself, without any possessions. He was all alone. And in that moment is when he encountered God. His past was dealt with right there and then and left behind. From that moment, he became a new person. He became Israel. And once he had left everything behind, then he stepped into his new life, his new role. So we wrestle with man and God. We in ourselves all the day, every day, have a decision to make. 
we wrestle with God. Our human self and our spiritual self. We have decisions to make every day. All day long we make thousands of decisions. God has given us a free will. So even though we are Christians, we still have a free will. We are still free to choose whether we follow God or whether we follow the world. That is the way he has created us. So we, tr- we freely choose to follow Jesus. We say, lead us, God, and we allow him to lead us. But every day we must make that decision. But if you're already clouded, your judgment's already clouded by your past and what's behind you, then you can't clearly make those decisions and those choices. And it makes us make wrong choices. So even though we're Christians, we've got to be careful of what we say, what we do, how we act, because we want to make sure that we're aligning ourselves with God. We want people to see Jesus through us. We really want Jesus to see, people to see Jesus through us. So we have to position ourselves and make the right choices. But like I say, if we're living in our past, how can we make those right choices? When we prevail and make the right choices, we are rewarded with a new identity, just as, Israel, just as Jacob was rewarded with Israel. It was an exhausting struggle that left him crippled. It was only after he wrestled with God and ceased his struggle, realising that he could not go on without him, that he received God's blessing. So we need to come to that realisation that we can't do this walk without God. We need God. We need God. By his strength, we walk through this world. We know how terrible it is out there. We know what it's like. But together, walking with God, we can overcome anything. So you can imagine wrestling with someone all night, the pain and fatigue that Jacob's body would have been through, would have went through. Yet he went through all that suffering so he could get his reward, to get his blessing. So even though it might seem like our pasts are so terrible and so bad, we need to overcome them to step into what God has for us. Jesus was not immune to the suffering of man. He took on himself the sins of man in the Garden of Gethsemane. So he took on all our sins, all our suffering, all our sickness, all our illness, everything he took on in Gethsemane. So he knows us. That's why I'm so thankful that our God became man so that he understands who we are. He understands our plight. He knows us better than we know ourselves. But we can have a choice to follow God or follow man because he gave us that choice. He freely gave us that choice. He's not forcing you to follow him. That's not who God is. He's a gentle, humble God. He doesn't come down with a sledgehammer, whack you and chain you up and make, drag you along with him. It's a free will, our free will to follow him, our free choice to follow him. Don't bring your past into the future. Leave them there and take up your new robes and walk in his footsteps. Proverbs 4, 25 to 27. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet. And be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. So don't look back. Don't look back. Don't bring it with you. Leave it all on the track, as they say. Leave it all behind. God wants an intimate relationship with us. He wants to be intimate with us. He wants to step every step with us, shed every tear with us, laugh every laugh with us, go through all the emotions with us. Not because he has to, but because he chooses to, because he wants to. He wants to have an intimate relationship with us. He wants to bring us into a oneness with him. You remember God knows everything you're going to say before you say it. He knows every thought you think. He knows everything about you. But he wants to.
to hear every thought you have. He wants to hear every word out of your mouth. He wants to be involved in every decision you make. He wants to be with you with everything you do. As a loving father, we want to be with your children. I love being with my son, with my grandies. I love walking with my son and just listening to what he says and see how he thinks and some of the crazy ideas he has. But I love being involved in it because he's my son. I want to be there. I want to be involved in his life. So it's the same as God. God wants to hear every word out of your mouth. He wants to be with us. He turns our brokenness into blessings. He wants to use all that back there, bless it, and turn it into a testimony of faith for others to follow and to move forward. But when, while we're still living in it, then that doesn't become a testimony, that becomes a fear, a struggle. While we're living back there, we can't use that to help others because we're still struggling to get through it. Through our brokenness, we're still struggling to get over that, to move into the past. So Papa God wants us to hand over our past, wants us to leave it all behind. We need to give all those struggles to him, take them all to him and lay them at his, at his feet. And it's only through prayer and guidance that we're able to do that. The Holy Spirit is guiding us every day, guiding us closer and closer into God's presence, closer and closer into a, more, a better relationship with Jesus, to know who he is. So the Holy Spirit's continually guiding us and moving us into that place. And he wants to take all your struggles, all your fears, everything that's binding you, and he wants to release it. So he's bringing you to that cross, bringing you to Jesus so you can release it, to give it to him. Because if we keep walking with it, it just taints everything we do. It corrupts everything we do. You know, Jesus is saying to love others with all your heart. You know, I'm broken, I can love others, but I can't truly love you because I'm still holding on to the past. You know, if you want to position yourself, in a, you've got... You get ideas in your mind, God puts ideas in your mind and shows you a future that you want to be in. Whether it's music team, whether it's missionaries, or whether it's just serving others and being out in community. He wants you to do all these things and he puts all these thoughts into your head. But to achieve that, we have to position ourselves with him because it's in God's strength that we walk forward and do these things. We need to be with God when we walk forward into this world to do things. You can't do it by yourself. You will fall. One person's easy to break. But if we stand with God and we stand with our brothers and sisters, we stand with our, with our family, then we can't be broken. We will stand strong. And we will achieve all these things. Yeah. So it's by bringing up our faults, bringing all those things. Like some people have got personal things they don't want to share. But God knows what they are. Take them to God. Pray to God. And he will help you release these things. You know, so I've, I've had a terrible past and I've done some terrible things. I'm not going to stand here and blab to everyone all the bad things I've done. I don't need to because I've given them to God. But I can say, you know, I've been on drugs, I've dealt drugs, I've done things like that in my life. And I'm ashamed of those things. I was ashamed of those things. But I'm not ashamed of them anymore because I've given them to God. I know God has healed my past. My past is taken care of. It's gone. It never disappears but I know it's covered by God. Christ's blood covers that. So I'm no longer that person. But I now know by my testimony, that my testimony of faith, that I can take that now and I can help others in that same situation and bring them closer to God. So turn our faults into testimonies. You can only do that when you let God win. You've got to let God win the battle. You've got to come and bow to his feet and give it to him. Let him win the battle. Now sometimes there's such trauma that it takes time to get over. But you bring it to him first and then come and talk to your family. There are people out there who help. So like we've got Mike Hughes, a friend of the fam from the house. He has a family counsellor. He's a brilliant man. 
You know, we've got people that we can take you to and, you know, we can guide you to who can help you in your walk, but we must do it. If you want to go forward, you must do it. You must leave that pain behind. When I was going through pain management course, you know, they talked about the pain that our mind creates. So, you know, we walk through, I've got pain, I've walked through pain every day. I wake up with pain, I go to bed with pain. But my pain keeps a normal person in bed, but it doesn't keep me in bed because I get out of bed with God. I walk with God all day and I go to bed with God at night. But it's about our mind and how we position our mind. We, want our, we can handle so much. But with God, we can handle so much more. I couldn't handle my pain before I positioned myself with God and gave it to God. I was bedridden. You know, I'd be in bed for a week at a time. I couldn't get up. I couldn't function. But when I gave that to God, he gave me the strength to stand up and move on. I used to blame doctors and everything for, the, for my pain. Oh, they're not listening to them. They're not helping me. Then I'm not getting guidance. But... That was me. Once God got involved, then the answers started coming. Then the right doctors were put in the right path and the right things were done. And I believe that was from God because I gave it to God. I said, God, I'm over this. I need help. Show me where to go. Show me what to do. And he did. But then through, um, through the professional counsellors and that, I learned how to deal with my pain in other ways, how to change my thinking. And with God, he helped me change my thinking too. So I don't walk around in this morbid state all the time now because I was able to release it to God and give it to God. Now I can put a smile on my face and I'm happy. I'm walking with my pain, but I know in my lowest moments that God is with me even so more. That's when I was at my severely depressed. You know, because I wasn't looking at God, I took my eyes off God. Then I placed everything between me and God. I could no longer see God. I could no longer feel God. I was no longer in his presence. I felt that way. But it's only when I learnt and really listened to the word and what he was telling me that he was with me through all of that. He was in the depth of that with me. All the way through that, he was right there with me. I just couldn't see him because I was looking back there at my past and dragging my past into the present. So I couldn't see him because I was putting my past between me and God. So I had to remove those blocks so that I could see him clearly and move forward. So like Marty had to come back into the future from his past. And we don't need 1.21 gigawatts of power to get us into the present. All we need is Jesus. All we need is Jesus to move us into the future. He has so much for us and it's created so much for us and so many blessings. And by releasing everything to him, then those blessings will be released to us. So let us break the moulds and let God make a beautiful mosaic out of our brokenness. Bring your burdens and pain and all that brokenness to Christ. No matter how small, Bring it to Christ. Remember, you can't hide anything from Christ. You may hide everything from everyone that surrounds you, but you can't hide it from Christ. He knows your heart. Just bring it to him and release it. Let him deal with it. Let him be in control of it and take it. So if we're not releasing it to him, then we can't truly get over what we've been through. We can hide it and make, you know, a lot of, a lot of people walk around with a masquerade, you know, with masks on. Letting people see one thing, but you know, truly, they're still living in their past and all that pain and bitterness because they haven't taken it to Christ. Or they take it to Christ and then they don't let it go. They're still hanging on. And still bring it. Every time you think about it, you bring it into the present. Every time you think about something, you bring it into the present. You keep bringing it into the present. But we need to change our mind and change our thinking and give it to God and let Him take it over. Let Him take it. So every time it comes up, keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on that cross. Keep your eyes on the blessings and the life that he has for you. You are not the sum of your past.
You are not living in the past. You are in the future. You are now in the present. Right here today is all that matters. And the only opinion that matters about your life is God's. No matter what anyone thinks of you, no matter what your family think of you, like a lot of my family think I'm a nut because I'm a Christian. You know, they think I'm a total nutter. You know, they won't listen to anything I say or have anything to do with me because they think I'm going to lead them into this mysterious unknown. But, you know, God has me. God's opinion of me is the only opinion that matters. None of their opinion matters. And that's what we need to remember. It's only God's opinion that matters in our life. What he thinks of us, what he says about us. He says, I'm a child of God. He says he loves me. And I love him. And that's all that matters. He says that I'm his friend. This almighty God of the universe, the creator of everything, says he's my friend. And he loves me. And that is enough. That is enough. So as we come into his presence, he is waiting there to take your hand. His hand is always out there for you. It is always there for you. His hand is always reached out there waiting for you to take hold of it. But it's our choice whether we take hold of it. It's our choice what we do after that. It's always your choice. You are free. Free indeed with Christ to make that choice. When you're in the world, there is no choice to be made. You can make choices that make your life better, but we're an eternal being. We're immortal. You live forever. You know, I love those movies, you know, the Eternals, and they live forever. We do live forever. There is no end to us. Your spirit lives forever. So where are you going to live? Where are you going to position yourself? I'd rather position myself in heaven. Thank you. Thank you, God. So after we pray, if you need prayer, if you think you need some help, if you've got anything that's tying you down that you think you need to release to God, then come forward. We're more than happy to pray with you. We're more than happy to position ourselves with you and help you release whatever you need to release to come into your new creation, into the new presence. I know Christians have been walking for years that are still living back there. And they're just finding life so hard. So if you're finding life hard, if you're just finding this Christian walk too hard and too much, then come and talk and release. Release it to God. Release it to Christ. He wants to take all that burden. He wants to take all that away and just leave his love because that's all that matters. Bring you into his presence to release what is binding you. Release it in his name. So dear Father, I just thank you that you are there for us. And I thank you that you have your son died and spilled his blood so that we could live. I thank you, Lord, that you became flesh and bone so that you know who we are. You know our struggles. You know what binds us. So Lord, we thank you that you, through that cross, through the shedding of that blood, that you gave us a new way. If we call on you, then we are a new creation in your name, in your blood. We are a new creation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So help us to walk in your faith. Help us to walk in your way. Give us the strength to stand up and make the changes we need to make to get motivated in following you. As you call and we follow, we freely follow. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Enjoy your week. Try to stay cool. There's heat. We'll see you all next week. God willing. Yay.
Thank you, John. Thank you. I'm still on. Oh! 